Hi and welcome back to the Hoglet engine build. So in part one we machined all the crankcase and we've screwed that together so that's all done and we've got the crank bearings here. We'll press those in at a later date when we come to build the engine. Then um, I've machined the crankshaft and the crank pins off, um, you know, off camera. I mean they're just simple machinings. I've just changed the um, design here. Um, the design on the plans has got a taper inside a piece of 8mm drill rod so I haven't got the tools for that so I've just gone with us you know just with a normal setup there's a gear what slides onto here and we'll just hold it on with probably a domed nut at the end so anyway so they're just simple machining jobs and then we're going to start on this video we're going to have a look at the crank webs so there'll be several different ways we can machine those but how I'm going to do it is I'm um, going to machine these two faces first and get those down to size, uh, which is two inches. And then once they're down to size, I'm going to drill and ream these two holes. And then I'll lock the two parts together with, um, you know, a couple of bits of scrap 8mm drill rod. So they'll fit in there exact. Because if we try and bolt them together, obviously the bolts are going to have a bit of slop in an 8mm hole if we use an 8mm bolt. So... It'll be better just to use a couple of pins for that and then they'll be locked solid. Once we've done that, we'll bring it down to length and we'll do these various uh, machinings here. And I think I might do this slit. Um, I'll do that afterwards. I'll get everything finished first and then I'll worry about those later. Same with the bolt, which will clamp the, the conrod, uh, not the conrod, so the crank shaft in and the crank pin. And then once we've done that, I'll make up an arbor um, for the centre hole. And then we'll spin that in the lathe and we'll get the radiuses on the ends um, turned down. So that's the first face done. Um, what we'll do now is we'll just de-rag and just take the burr off and then we'll flick them over and we'll sit this straight on the um, bed of the vise and then we'll machine the other sides. got a bit more meat to take off on this side so I'm going to swap over to an end mill just to rough this off and then we'll go back to the fly cutter to finish
So yeah, so we want to hit 50.8, two inches. And we've got 50.9, so just over two inches, very slightly over two inches. So that's fine, you know, I'm happy with that. And we've got a nice finish on there. So next we'll bring these down to thickness. Um, on the plans it is 438,000, so roughly around about 11 mil. So we'll put these on parallels and then we'll fly cut those each side. So that's them down to size. So we've got, um, we're still too long, but we're going to finish that off uh, on the lathe. We'll, you know, when we turn them. So what we're going to do now is put the crankshaft hole. So that's going to go straight in the center. Then the crank, crank pin, which is obviously going to uh, make the pistons go up and down, is offset. So we'll drill and ream those two holes.
So we'll just lock these together. Just deburr that first. So they're really um, a good fit in those. So I was going to lock tight them in, but I think I'm just going to leave it how it is because um, they won't fall out now. Oops, but not use that. No. I don't think they're going to fall out for a time being anyway. So once we turn it on the lathe, I might just um, lock tight that in just to stop that from flying out. But anyway, so that's now going to hold all that rigid. So what we'll do now is we'll bring these down to size in their length. I'm just um, in the process of putting a half radius on the end here and just coming in uh, nine mil. So we've got to do that and then we've got two wider ones here. Um, this is all to help with the balancing of the final crank assembly when it's all together. And then um, once we've done that, we can then go over to the lathe and then obviously machine the uh, radiuses on the ends. So I've gone as far as I can with the um, crank webs. So I've done some of the bits of machining off camera because um, it's just normal sort of machine. And with the slit in here, I started the slit off with a slit and saw just to get a nice straight cut rather than cutting through with a hacksaw blade. And then once I'd done that, I just finished it off with a hacksaw. So that just, you know, just cleans this outer edge up so it doesn't look all ragged. And also counterboard, uh, drill tap these for an M6 and then counterboard the tops. So they're all done. Well, I was hoping to machine the flywheel rims as well, which these were going to slot into or sweat into. Um, but at the moment, I'm having problems trying to locate bronze at a reasonable price. Uh, what I've got to source is some just over four inch round either solid or hollow bronze and at that price you're looking at 230 bucks in New Zealand that's New Zealand dollar and that's a lot of money just for you know a couple of pieces of small bronze I even asked for like any off cuts you know any bar ends or whatever but no that's that was the price so I don't know what I'm going to do yet I'm still carry on looking and um, perhaps if anybody is in New Zealand and they can you know they know a source of uh, cheaper price than that uh, just comment below you know Otherwise, I'm going to probably go with some steel rims, which are going to be a lot cheaper. Uh, not going to look as nice as what bronze would on the outside of these. But at the end of the day, you know, that's a lot of money. And um, I don't know, what do you guys think? Just leave me a comment for that as well. Do you reckon I should go steel or bronze? So I don't know what to do. 
anyway, so that's it for this video. Until I can locate some bronze or brass, even brass would do, you know. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.